Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner Child. We finna have a quick little chit chat, okay? We finna have a quick little chit chat, okay? Y'all almost did not get me here tonight, y'all. Y'all almost did not get me, but we are here, okay? We're gonna have a good little conversation. And since I was not live yesterday, I did not want to also not be live today. Because I am thoughtful, okay? I'm a thoughtful person, and I love y'all or whatever, okay? But happy Friday, happy weekend and stuff, and we're going to go ahead and get into. Now, um, it was only a few things to be discussed, so that is why this won't be no long, long live. You know, it's, just a, it's the scraps of it all, and I did not want to wait and have to talk about this stuff either on on Sunday or Monday. So I said, no, come on, lie tonight, get it over and done with, and here we are. Okay, now y'all know like, comment, or like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, follow me on social media at Jenny's Corner on IG, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm here. Hey, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hello, everyone. Okay, I hope everybody had a great day, gonna have a great weekend, because that's you know what, I'm here or whatever. Hello, hello, hello to those watching live. Hello to those who will be watching, not watching. Well, no, hello to those who watch the replay. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, okay? Happy birthday, happy birthday. It's also my best friend's birthday, too. So you share your birthday with my best friend, okay? Um, So happy birthday, Okay, and also happy birthday to my bestie, 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 Carla. Okay, it's her birthday too. And we're gonna go on time tonight, y'all, because again, it's just we're gonna just run it. And that's it, okay? Because when it's not much going on, when it's not much going on, we're gonna go ahead and get through it. And I want to get to I got some things to do, okay? You got yes, see Bella, how you doing? You caught a whole live, okay? Caught a whole live, you know what I'm saying? I'm also, you know, um thinking about I'ma probably start doing lives during the week at 11 a.m. from 11 a.m. to noon. So that way, when I get home from work, I don't have to go live unless something happened within the day. So starting next week, uh, I'm going to start doing lives in the morning, okay? Because 11, 12, you know, 12, 12, 15 or whatever, 
um, then I'll either go to work and that will work. Because again, the even time, sometimes y'all, I'm tired, y'all tired. So, you know, sometimes the stuff happen in the in the afternoon time. I won't be laughing about it that day. I'll go laugh about it the next morning at 11, okay? If you can make it, that's cool. If you can't, watch the replay. But we live right now at 9 p.m. But I want to start um, doing some lives before I go to work. This is gotta add some content or whatever, have some conversation. It won't only be about uh, you know, gossip or whatever. It may be about other little shows. Cause I want to, I want to discuss Daria from Detroit. I think the season, the season finale come on next week. So I want to start having morning conversations from eleven to twelve about random things. Okay, but we here today because this stuff popped up on my thing. And so we have to talk about it. Now, I saved stuff. And so we're going to discuss it. Okay. Y'all, when I tell y'all I did a quick thumbnail, I mean a quick thumbnail. Because I was like, child, get something up real fast. Because the thumbnail helps remind me of what I'm supposed to cover. So sometimes that's why I need the thumbnail because it reminds me of the main stuff that's on the, the agenda for us to talk about. Okay, so again, y'all know like, comment, share, subscribe, but let's just go ahead and share my screen and then let it be what it is. And then we're going to all chill out and have a good old weekend. Now, love after lock up is back. I will be reviewing the show. Those reviews will be up. Sometime tomorrow, it will be a premiere. It will not be um, a live. And then Love and Marriage Huntsville is back. Those will probably be live reviews on Sunday afternoons. But as shows come back, y'all know, because I'm really a TV show reviewer, okay? But all the shows went away. <laughs> it's, uh, and some shows, I, some shows I left alone, but I want to get back into the review of shows I'm going to because I feel like you know I want to also get back into reviewing Married at First Sight whatever whenever the next season comes out because this kind of because y'all sometimes the gossip stuff you know is it's, it's messy sometimes it's, it's aggravating and sometimes we want to little, little laugh little talk little key key about shows we watch and then that's it. So I'm just saying, okay. Um, but again, this is the thing we're gonna discuss. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Now, first things first. I feel like um we had discussed Glorilla getting arrested the other day on on Wednesday because I was not live on a uh, Thursday, and the picture they first had up wasn't her. The night she got arrested. Okay, this is her actual mug shot, and the get you got. I said, I said, oh, she look, look. I said she do look a little buzz. Now I do know that TMZ was the ones who got the footage of her being uh, uh her being put over, them talking to her, and all of that. But you know, TMZ is good for always flagging me, and I, I think I don't know why. I don't know why. However, I don't want to play the video that shows her, um, the, the cops talking to her, her car, and she, I'm, I'm not going to play it, y'all. I, I want y'all to see her in the car because they can't flag me for, for having this showing um, a, a steel shot. They can know if I play the video, that's different. That's different. But, you know, TMZ obtained the uh, body cam. I saw TMZ got everybody online. Okay, TMZ be having all the stuff around here, everything. Now, what I want to say is, from watching, because I watched it, I watched it, and you know, sometimes we feel like, oh, if a celebrity, if a celebrity gets put over, or a black person in general, if we get put over, the cops are being mean and rude to us or whatever. They're being aggressive, and that is not what happened this time. And I feel like Lorilla. I don't, I don't know how old she is, but I do know is, ma'am, ma'am, you are too in the limelight, and you are of age enough to know, girl, stop, 
oh, she's 24. Okay, she's 24 years old. Now, how, and I, I've, I've only been pulled over. I, when I, I'm, I've only been pulled over for like speeding. I've never been pulled over for like, you know, anything other than speeding. Maybe I, maybe I ran a light. So, but I feel like when she got pulled over, clearly from the video, she had been drinking. She wasn't like fall. She wasn't like sloppy drunk. She wasn't belligerent and drunk, but she was drunk enough to where she thought, I'm fine. Look, I know you a cop and you pull me over, whatever, but I'm fine. I can drive home. I'm like, ma'am, that's not how this works at all. Okay. And maybe she's never been pulled over before. And so she don't know. You can't just say, I'm fine. And they let you go away. The cop, what I had you been, the cop that she could smell the liquor. She could smell marijuana, so she was going to check the car. And then she's like, yeah, anything in common fine? Um, I got a gun. Where the gun at? It's in the car. I say, bitch, what? When she said, where's the gun? And then she said, it's in the car. She's like, is it, like a, is it put up somewhere? Like, don't grab for it, but like, it's it's in the back seat. I was like, it was just weird hearing her response, and that let me know she had been drinking a little bit, a little bit. Again, she wasn't messy drunk. But clearly, she was talking as if it ain't no big deal. I know you smell weed because I'm in. Well, she said, well, you know, is, am I going to find weed in the car? Not enough for me to go to jail. I was like, man, that ain't the point. So watching the footage, you know, she, I got to pee. She got the car. Honey, her pants are on, are on button a little bit or whatever. It was just a lot to where I feel like she was drunk enough to not comprehend Ma'am, they're gonna arrest you for drinking and driving because you're clearly drunk. Um, even the way that she was, she wasn't really answering the questions, and she kept asking more. I said, "Why do you keep asking more questions? You've been drinking." And I was like, you know, and I saw people saying how, um, and even I said that too. How you know, after she was, you know, got out or whatever, she posted a photo of herself, like, holding, like, either wine or champagne or whatever, and folks felt like, girl, people die from drunk drivers, and you up and making fun of it, you could have killed somebody, and I feel like she's 24, she's young, she may be young and dumb, when she may be young and dumb, but I was like, I need someone to say, Glorilla, you can't be around here drinking and driving, ma'am, let alone then post the photos of yourself holding, you know, any kind of alcoholic beverage or whatever, because folk like we don't like drunk drivers at all. And could she have made the home safety? It's possible, it's possible. But girl, she had been drinking, she had been, and hopefully she learned her lesson and don't do it no more. Um, but she she did that shit. Point blank period. Uh, congratulations to Kid Cuddy. Kid Cuddy is, is engaged to Lola Last name I cannot pronounce. Uh, congrats to the couple. I don't know who she is. We know who he is. I don't know. I don't know her though. But you know, not not I, a part. What I thought he was gay. Is that no? Maybe that ain't Kid Cuddy. Maybe it ain't Kid Cuddy. I thought no, because Kid Cuddy wasn't he the one trying to get with? Excuse me, with Cassie. Am I mixing people up? I don't know, but congrats to him nonetheless because he's engaged. He said, my fiance Lola and me at the Knuckles premiere. This amazing woman makes me so happy. She's everything to me, and I'm so excited to share this news with you all. Life was wild, and right when I felt my future was uncertain, it became crystal clear with Lola. Happy cud in full effect. And when somebody else is happy, we happy for them. Okay? So kudos to Kid Cuddy and his, his, his future wife, his fiance. I mean, that be. Um, we seen some, I seen some prime dresses that I wanted to just talk about fast because I don't have fashion stuff. And I was like, people is treating prime like weddings these days because some of these dresses, child, some of these dresses is like, what, what was the budget? Was it no budget? Was it done on a budget? Because I was like, that's a this dress is really, really pretty. It fits her really, really well. Okay, I don't know these people or whatever. But I was like, y'all really out here. Now I feel like when I went to prom back in 2000, we all had cute dresses too, but this is cute to a whole new level because the fashion has changed. Child since two thousand. Okay. Um. Also, like the dresses is real cute. You know, so it's it, it's fashion and whatnot. Now I was actually a whole horse. 
they rented a whole horse. Now her dress is cute. I like her dress. I like her shoes. Okay. Um, they look really, really pretty. Okay, the dress looks not homemade, but special made. But I was like, that's a whole horse. I feel like horses stink. So I would not want to be by a horse on prime day, prime night, prime time, because I don't want to smell like a horse once I get to, you know, the, the party of the prime or whatever. But her outfit is really, really cute. You know what I'm saying? It's real short, y'all. Like the swimsuit and, some, and, and some, a little skirt. Now, she tried, had a whole snake up upon the boobage, okay? Now, I don't like her hair at all. Um, uh, I feel like blue hair, I just don't understand blue hair. Like, it's not blue finger wave hair. Like, the blue hair, to me, don't match the dress. I feel like, maybe, I'm like, maybe I don't like the style. The dress, I love. Okay, even with the serpent snake coming up to the throat, okay? But, you know, it's, it's different. The boobs are covered, okay? And that's a good thing, too. Um, They at the helicopter. Her and the dude, okay, it's blue. And I get all white and little touches of blue. I get it. It's fine. But I feel like you did not need blue hair. Okay, you didn't. Yeah, this is a, a prime. You did not need blue hair, okay? Because he had the blue sneakers on, the blue lapel, not blue sneakers, the blue laces in his sneakers, the blue lapel. She has blue hair. I was like, ma'am, the snake could have been blue. I, if, if it was supposed to be a touch of blue, the snake going up would have been an ombre. It goes from white and it would have went all the way up. And the top of the head would have been blue of the snake around the boobage. But I just I just don't like the blue hair. It's a no for me. Um, I said, now this is really, really pretty. Okay. It's like a feathery type of dress. She's all covered up or whatever. It's a whole lot. I mean, I don't know how she's gonna sit down because it looks hard. Or maybe they have a fan blowing the front of her, so it's blowing out back, and maybe the back of it ain't hard. Um, I don't know. But I said, okay, that's a nice prime dress. Now, this, the bottom of her dress, give me octopus. You know what I'm saying? Give me octopus or whatever. Uh, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm like, you know, does this is it stiff or does it move? I just wonder. Because if it's stiff. Walking around, anybody around her gonna have a hard time because her dress is stiff and they can't move it out the way. I, I don't know. Okay, I like the color. It's fine or whatever, but again, I don't like the white, the white uh, per, the white pearl uh, he, uh, clutch. Don't like that. Um, is they by the water? I don't mind. Did they go by the water to take this photo? She looked tired. Her feet hurt. She hot. The dress is itchy. I don't want to be here. I don't want to hold his hand. I'm ready to go. She looked like she ready to go. That's like, a, that's like a wedding dress. The top looks wedding dress. The top look heavy. So she probably is aggravated. Her shoes are cute, though. Is she wearing stockings? I hate stockings. Anyway, and then lastly, this, this little look right here. Um, you can tell someone's holding her dress up, put the dress down, okay? But this is really, really cute, you know? I don't mind her, you know, the platinum hair or whatever, but I like her dress. The dress, to me, would have been prettier if they wasn't holding it up like they was a superhero. Yeah, like, a, like a superhero suit. Is I don't like the holding, holding it up part. Um, I would say my fave out of all of these... It's between her, this right here, the purple, between the purple and this. One of those two is my favorite. But they think really, really good child. They, they're out here doing it all for prom in 2024. I feel like what prom going to look like in 2045? I don't know. It may be something different. Um, I have some other little random stuff. You know, Paris Hilton finally showed us her baby. Her, Paris has a daughter and a son. 
and she talked about having a daughter. The daughter, as you said, the daughter's like a couple months old now. She talked about having a daughter when the daughter was born via a surrogate. Okay, but she did not show the little, girl, the little girl's face. She did not show us her name. Well, the little girl name was London Marilyn Hilton. Girl, I don't know, is R E U M is it Rim? I'm, maybe it's Rim. I don't know. Um, you know, so now Paris has two children, a little boy and a little girl. And you see, they're not too far off in age. Um, which, you know, some folk like that because you want your child to have a sibling close in age, play together, lay together, whatever, not gonna lay together, play together, hang around <laughs> and be good old siblings. So congrats to Pierce, basically for showing us a little girl uh, with that big ass boat, her husband or whatever. Um, put, that boy short need to be a little bit longer, but that's just me. I'm like, this, this, this look tight. Look tight, look tight, look tight, little shorts. But parents, you know, her children, you know, happy and healthy and rich. You know, there you go. Um, I kept, y'all, I kept, I, I was, because I was listening to Funky the other day, Funky Donnie the other day, and he had mentioned, because I had, I, y'all know I be on TikTok. I be on TikTok scrolling a lot. And on TikTok, I'm going to change the screen. On TikTok, I had seen, a whole bunch of people asking um, tax questions about, oh my God, I filed my taxes or whatever, and the IRS and gave my money. The IRS is trying to rip on my rip on my identity. What's going on? Why? 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 Well, now you know, tax date and passed. Tax date was the fifth, the fifteenth, and some folks still have not gotten their refund yet. So some people had gotten letters saying, "Hey, you have to come on down to the tax office to prove your identity." in person. Uh, and so I had seen videos in, in a couple of different cities where the people around there had went ahead and went down to the, the IRS office. And when Funky said it was some girl with like who, who just did child look poor, sounded crazy, had one leg. And why would the news people go find that one person to interview? And I said, well, that it wasn't that bad. Well, y'all know y'all, and I'm not going to jail. Hello, I'm at the IRS, and then they talking about they taking us to jail, but we don't leave because two women had a fight, but they taking it out on all of us. All of us need our monions, and it's not right. I said, what the fuck is monions? I'm from Detroit. We don't say monions. I don't know if that's a, a Houston slang for money or whatever. People got kids. Anything goes. Yeah. How long were you waiting in line? I've been waiting for hours. You feel me? We want that money. I ain't going nowhere bad for my return. I need my money. Real talk. And this ain't right what they doing. And that's going to be a bad disrespect. They better know it today at the IRS. Yeah. 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 I don't love it. I ain't doing no plan. This is the second month I came out here. And I'm not been playing with the IRS. I'm not and go to jail behind me. Yeah. We need all Because y'all know me. I need to see stuff before I comment on stuff or whatever. When I say I whole I wholeheartedly agree with Funky's take on like why out of all the people in line. Of, out of all the folks in line, that's who y'all went to? Um, child, look. I don't like judging folk. I mean, I like cracking jokes sometimes, but I don't like judging folk. And I feel like, you know, I need all 7,000, man. I need all 7,000. I'm like, man, that let us know when somebody, child, no, fuck it. When somebody who act like that and say I've been, been down here for four hours with I, my money, is, it kind of it kind of let me know you getting a refund because of your children. You know, and I feel if 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 this was a white person. Talking white hillbilly ish, how they do. I would say the same thing. I'm not saying that because she's black, because I wish they had a white person around now. You know, because we know the white equivalent 
of this black person because we know there are white equivalents, and I call them here, but it's no disrespect. You know what I'm saying? Um, the same way we, we know our, our black folks say, you know, this is a little bit hood, a little bit gay at the toe. We also know that there are white people who are just like this in their own white way. Okay. And if it was a white person in her own white way, acting like this and talks like this in her own white way, I would say, ma'am, you getting a refund of your children. Now, don't get me wrong. The IRS need to stop playing with people, but TV people, the camera people, the interviewing people, whoever the people is that made the choice to interview Ms. Munyon down there in the hot uh, Houston sun that she'd been sitting in for four hours, y'all couldn't get anybody else except her? I'm just wondering. It could have been more people to talk to. I also feel like the IRS is like, you know, we have all these people who is getting all these thousands of dollars back. And I do feel like some of the folks who they flagged were, in my opinion, no matter of their race or whatever, I feel like the IRS probably flagged a lot of people whose income was within a certain level who were getting high refunds and said, come verify this is you. Meaning is you, them, your children, and this and that and that. Because why would they not, you know what I'm saying? It's weird. Because it was, it was hundreds of people. I saw two videos from like two different states of like hundreds or thousands of people outside, I think it was, I think it was also was here in Michigan, in Detroit, where it was hundreds or thousands, like a thousand folks outside waiting to talk to somebody to get their money. Because I, I need, I need my money up front. But I do want us people, you know what I'm saying, when you go down somewhere and wait in line, just, I mean, just, 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 you know, just look, just dress regular, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know, because I don't want <laughs> I'm trying my best not to judge her because I don't know her situation, but I feel like, ma'am, and then if a fight broke out, okay, if a fight did break out, why? How, when a fight break out, I don't give a fight break out at church. I'm leaving. I'm going home. Because if y'all fighting in the church, I don't need to be here, okay? So I feel like every time people say, oh, fight broke out, and I ain't going to, well, man, why didn't you leave? So if a fight broke out, the police around there, they want you to leave, you won't leave, now you upset, just come back tomorrow. And if you have a job that you can't leave, I don't know, what, because fussing, with the IRS ain't never gonna work. Okay, the IRS will always win that battle. And she, and y'all and she was in the I had to go to the Fox at the same time. The lady was in the wheelchair. You know, and you know, so she, I'm, at least she was sitting and one standing. But some folks had a standing line all that time. You sat down for hours, man. You child, sit down there and play some game, games on your phone. Chill out. I just don't know about what the what the munions for. I've never heard of munions, but again, some folks be like, girl, the IRS is playing with people. Um, I haven't heard of anyone getting a live check from the IRS. Thank God all the people don't no, get about that. Well, some of these people, I think, wasn't even getting the direct deposit. I think some of them were not. So when I say when I say a check, I mean to say money. You know what I'm saying? Some folk were saying they could not get their money in general. I don't, I don't know many folks who do get checked. I'm like, shit, what was that? Um, she, 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 she mad. <laughs> She's real mad. Uh, that was advocate. Did the athlete go to her to embarrass her, us? Or did they notice her acting a fool? And they said, winner, same thing. <laughs> same thing. Um, but I just need, you know, sometimes we just say, you know, look, I be like, man, look, don't, don't embarrass me. Don't don't embarrass, I don't, don't embarrass me. 
don't be up here loud or whatever. Calm the down because we don't have time for that. Not at the all. But she she want her money. And stop. She probably didn't never get it. We shall see. Um, child, did y'all? I said I said what happened? Kanye West being investigated for a battery at the allegedly punched a man in the face for putting his hand under his white dress. Look, I don't say this often. I don't say this often. Kanye West had every right to do what he did. <laughs> if you put now, because I heard, I had heard something about it or whatever. While Kanye and the wife was walking around somewhere out in public, y'all know that she don't wear much clothes. But even if she, I don't care if she walking around naked, nobody has a right to put their hands on anyone, no matter what they're wearing. Period. You know, um, Kanye team says a man put his hands under her dress, uh, directly on her body, grabbed her waist, spun around, and then blew her kisses. Um, and they said they say that they felt that she had been battered and sexually assaulted. Now, by definition, is what it is. Um, but you know, I, I feel like one, I feel I feel two ways. Kind of the same way either would go. Kanye West had the right to defend his wife. And when somebody touched her and you punched that person, fine. Because the person should have never put their hands on his wife. I also feel like because we know some folk around here is, is stupid and, and going to get punched in their face, protect your wife. People have the right to walk around bucket naked if they want to. No one has the right to put their hands on anybody. But I also feel like when you're out in public, people are stupid. They may put their hands on you because they assume it's a, it's, 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 it's free it's free to it's it's not free touches. It ain't free touches. I think a lot of folks have said she walks around showing her body because that's what she want to do. And that's her right. No one to touch her because it's wrong. But I also feel like maybe when you are when you're out in public in large crowds, just put your titties up. Put some panties on. Regardless. Regardless of what she wearing, Kanye should have beat whoever asked who touched his wife. Period. People, people, y'all, I think we have to also remember, people is crazy these days. Some folk don't believe in rules. They are completely disrespectful. They are not uh, respecting people's boundaries. And I feel like there's nothing someone can do that will stop a person who feels like they have the right to violate you. There's, no matter how many clothes you have on, a person may still try and touch you. I also feel like I'm going to still cover my titties because at least that way you're not looking at my titties, okay? So I'm not blaming her or Kanye at all. I want to make that clear. I'm not blaming them at all. But I also just, just in, in no matter if someone touched her or not, I still want her to put some of them clothes on. I want you out in public, okay? When you're out here at these events, put your titties up, put some panties on. Just saying, okay? Just saying. Re regardless of what she's wearing, don't touch her. But just, even, I felt this way before this happened. I was saying, I, I always, I was like, why? I want to put her titties up. That's all. But anyone putting their hands on, I said, and, and I said the, the person put their hands like under her house and that your hand should get cut off. Your hand cut it off. But people child, people boundaries, people be crossing boundaries and they're gonna get punched in the face. A uh, cat doll who we know is pregnant with a second child is going to name her daughter Clarity. She had a baby shower with her friends around now. And we know she has a, the son. I think the son name was Cashton or Cashton, I believe. And so this child will be named Clarity. I said, child. Okay. Clar Clarity is a cute name. It's Clarity with a K, not a C. And, you know, it's her, you know, she has a boy. Now she has a little girl. She already told her, just her, her she's not having no more children. She's two and done. Um, you know, again, Cash. Cash I think it's Cashton or Cash Dunn. I don't remember. 
but you know, and then uh, clarity. Now, clarity, I guess it's a, a normal name. I guess it's cute. You know, clarity. I mean, what they call her Claire for short or Riddy? Clarity. I don't know. Anyway, congrats to her and the baby and whatnot. I think the folks kept on wondering what she would call the daughter. Um, but it would be Cash something. I'm happy it wasn't Cash Summer because that real name ain't Cash Dawn at all. Um, congrats to Garcelle. Okay, Garcelle of Love. Well, no, not, not Love. Right. Garcelle of Housewives of, of Beverly Hills. Also, fancy. Okay, Garcelle who had that that movie on Lifetime. Well, they just gave her three new movies. Okay, that she will be producing, creating. Look, I feel like we have to celebrate when our people get, you know, chances to create more stuff. The movie she did called Black Girl Missing came out last year, of course. Um, you know, so Lifetime is extending the franchise. Okay, and she will be EPing things, three new movies. Because back in the day when I was younger, we used to love Lifetime movies. You know, we used to love, like, they had, they had real good Lifetime movies. So I'm happy that not only are more Black stories being told on Lifetime, they're allowing Black people behind the scenes to do it. Okay, to be EPs, creators amazing. So I'm like, congrats to Garcelle. Okay, I can't wait to see what other movies she do. Now, the new season of the Upshaws, I, I put this up for a reason. Uh, Auntie Tab, which child she might, I can't say Auntie. Tab, <laughs> Tabitha Brown. Um, I have not watched the new season of the Upshaws. I'm going to probably get into that one day this weekend or maybe next week. I don't know. Um, but she has a guest starring role on the show. You know, the show, the Upshaws stars um, Wanda Sykes. Also, Kim, you know, I say Kim Fields. Is it Kim Fields or Kim Cole? Or Kim Fields. Kim Fields. Uh, Mike Epps is around now. Um, and, and some other people, whatever. But she had a guest starring role. And I said to myself, because we didn't know. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know that she was on there, whatever. And I said, this is how you bring the social media that you had a guest starring role on a show. You you just post that you, you know, you, you do this. You know, the, the little tab is getting better and better, okay? And I swear, y'all, child, when, when tab just talks about how where she was before and how she was, you know, and how blessed she is and how things are happening in their own and, and in its own time. So I'd be like, Shaylee is coming. Girl is coming. Everything happens in divine order and divine time. And I love the fact of how she shows gratitude. I love how she shows growth. I love how she's always in good job. She's like my mama, you know? She like my mama. My mama the same way. Anyway, but you know, great, 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 and not I, and not to compare and contrast, but I feel like when Nene came around here, you know, fussing about Portia, and that's how we found out that Nene was going to have a guest starring role on the show. I would like to that was messy. That was messy, and to me, when you are an actor or when you are a person in the in the industry. And you're working and trying to, you know, move through this thing like you're moving or whatever. You, in my opinion, you know, to let folk know about you have you guest starring, but in a messy way. It's like, child, you move move differently, Mimi. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. So I I can't wait to watch the new season because it's a good I think it's a it, it's a good show it's a good show um I've watched all the, the other seasons I think it's a season four even though I'm mistaken it's a, it's a good show I like it um and they've had other little guest stars over time and whatnot so look, look tab time around now is a good thing we I don't know if Nene I, I, I haven't because I have not seen the season yet I don't know if Nene made the cut okay because when you cause drama you can be cut on the show 
Anyway, congrats to Tab for being on a guest star on the Netflix show. Okay. Um, I feel like I told y'all it wasn't much, right? It wasn't. Um, I want to, to oh, y'all, Meek Mill was in a was a child, he was in a, a car accident. Thank God he okay. You know, thank God he's okay. Now he posts no God telling. God tell them don't crash out for the busters. I'ma listen. Shit knocked me out last night loud. GMC, the whole brake pedal slipped off. My first time driving, shake my head. Now, your first time driving, maybe even the first time driving, first time driving the car. Now, when I seen this thing right here, I said, What is going on? But he's saying how the brake thing fell off. The first day the brake pedal came on. I got to think. Look at this shit right here. Why the brake, the whole brake pedal came off. The first day, I never seen no car. Sir, that's just uh, the that's just a that's a cushion. And it, the the, the brake they the brake ain't fall off. Okay, first day I bought this car, no airbags. Brake pedal came off with door open. So with door open, no safety effects, no laser system working. This knocked me out bad. I was in the park. I was in park, and the car started. Pulling off, I had this car for four hours maximum. Well, sir, did you test drive it? I'm just wondering. But again, daddy's okay. Cause y'all know when you look, y'all. Cause I had my car accident in 2016, and being in a car accident is so traumatic. Cause even to this day, to this day, when I'm driving down the street where I got hit. It gives me anxiety. I've been, I've been looking around, it's, 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 and I was, I was hit by a drunk, high driver. Okay, totaled my car. Thank God I'm alive. Okay, but car accidents are very, very traumatic, and I feel like, um, one, thank God he's okay because it could have been, you know, and when you when someone hits you, your car can flip. It can get hit by other cars. You know what I'm saying? All this and that. Like cause my car, they told me. Luckily, my damn car didn't explode because they hit the gas tank side. I was lucky. So glad he okay. But where the car come from? You know, but y'all, and I also like, child, some of these new cars, these brand new cars, um, child, I don't know. Because I want, I want a new used car. I don't want a car note. I do not want a car note. So I want like a 2021 car. Okay, maybe 2022. Maybe because I mean these car try these car prices or whatever. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. However, um child, look, when I kept seeing the comments that folks said, Oh, did I said, Why y'all? I said, No, why y'all doing that? Now why y'all saying that? But this one said he must have bought the car from 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 Matilda Daddy. I said, Child, not Matilda Daddy. Um Diddy ain't leaving no witnesses. I was like, no, why y'all gonna what? What? No, what did he? Child, that ain't what did he? Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, but thank God he's okay. Uh, Rihanna mm -hmm. started talking or whatever, right? Okay. And I feel, let's, let's listen a little bit. Positions in the future. I mean, any plans to have RZA and Riot on your upcoming album? Just, just I mean, saying. It's up to them. Yeah. I already got stuff that I feel like I can make hits out of. Oh, yeah. I look. Let me say this. I feel like y'all know y'all know that Queen Latifah started off as a rapper. You know, LL Cool J, rapper, but they're actors now. You know, LL Cool they be acting. Uh, he all he all on the the what is it NCIS? I don't know. Queen Latifah be acting. Ice T, Ice T used to be a rapper. He brought that being signed into uh, to Tuola. Would would live in them on, on, on SVU. Rihanna, in my opinion, don't want to put out no, no more music. Stop asking her for new music. Ain't nobody asking um Queen Latifah or uh or or, or, or um Will not Will Smith, Lord Jesus. Uh Queen Latifah. Well, well Will Smith, because Will Smith was a rapper. You know, so I feel like when certain people are like just not doing music. 
leave it alone. Stop asking her about that. She ain't doing it. If she do, in my opinion, it won't. Look, this is my opinion. I feel like whatever album she do next, it won't be the same like it was before. You know, Brianna has not put out music in a long time. And we not waiting for Queen Latifah to do album or Ice T or Will Smith. But I love his old stuff. Okay. You can't get me to not love Will Smith music. Okay. Here comes the men in black. Me, I love men in black. All the songs, whatever. But I feel like, you know, we not look, we not looking for LL Cool J new songs. Hell, I watched a show on Netflix called Sweet Magnolias. I did not know the black lady in the show is Heather Headley, who you decide. I said, we, I'm not looking for no new Heather Headley music, but I'm waiting for the new season of Sweet Magnolias on Netflix. I sure the hell am. All I know is no one, people should stop asking Rihanna about an album because she'll do it when she wants to. But I don't think it's going to be how it was. Now, like, let's compare and contrast. Beyonce. Beyonce. Beyonce puts out puts out albums every couple of years. You know what I'm saying? So Beyonce putting out music, let's say in two years. It's like, but she keep putting out music. Rihanna has not had an album out in, let me see. Rihanna's last album. What was it? 2016. Okay. She had not put out, put out an album in eight years. Okay. And in the time that she's not put, put out an album, she has still been, you know, working her, her the, the child, the Fenty stuff, the makeup, the facial, the, the facial stuff, the lingerie. Okay. She's been still, you know, being productive. But I feel like I don't think she really wants to do music it's because if she did, she would. In my opinion, because eight years is enough time to put something out. The one song she did with the Black Panther movie, Let Me Out, that was okay, cool, fine, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like, well, no, I'm not talking about Beyonce and actors. I'm just, I'm just saying, people. Me bringing up Beyonce was me, was me showing Beyonce does not put out albums every year. Beyonce also takes breaks. She will take a break in between time and then come back with an album. Is my point in comparing her with Rihanna. Rihanna has been on an eight year break <laughs> of music, and in between time, you know, she's done things. She's produced babies literally two babies and her Fenty baby you know and I just feel like I'm not waiting for a new Rihanna album I'm not maybe four years ago I think I was like okay she's gonna do something but I'm like now I've been eight you know what I'm saying and sometimes I feel like when she is asked about it she feel like she has to say oh yeah I, I, I think I got no no. And in two weeks, it's possible that she'll put out an album. It's possible. However, just stop asking her about it, okay? Leave her be, because I don't think it's coming. Anyway, that's just my opinion, and that's the point. Um, Kevin Gates. I feel like Kevin Gates, I don't know where he came from. I don't know why he's like always in the news. I feel like Kevin was in prison and got out. He may not have even been in prison, but in my head, I feel like he's a person who out the blue came somewhere. Now, did he come from prison? He must have came from prison. And then he was being talked about here, there, and everywhere. He went on social media, y'all, and was talking about how he was upset because a homeless person did not eat the food like on the spot. I was like, no, what the what? This kind of shit pissed me the fuck off. I had got two sandwiches from Chick-fil-A. Now I gave this lady one of my sandwiches, right? See what the name is on that bitch. 
so you first of all, my, my, the first bone I had to pick is you going to Chick Fil A, and when they say what's the name on the order, you put God. Yeah, God. Yeah, that's me. But anyway, so oh, uh, I just love when they be like God. I be like, yes, Lord. I think they may be they may be blasphemy. It may be a child anyway. That's child, you have a God complex. Bless you, my child. But anyway, long story short, I reach her this my uh Chick-fil-A sandwich out the window, right? This motherfucking bitch then put my Chick-fil-A Why she a bitch sandwich in her book sack and put the sign back up there. Now I thought you said you was hungry. You'll work for food. You should have ate that bitch right there. You so fucking hungry. She put that bitch in her book second. Put the sign back up. I said, you bitch. This kind of what aggravated me the most was when I'm hungry and I'm starving and I go to a restaurant and I pick up of my food. Even I don't sit in the line and eat the food. Like, I wait till I get home. You got you a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Did you sit and eat the food on deck? Why would you expect her to stop in the middle of the street and eat some food? Why would she not want to eat the food when she has time to sit to herself and eat the food? And if you give somebody something it should not be no rules regulations restrictions or directions hey if i give you my sandwich okay i need you to eat it right here because you're hungry big so was you hungry you was hungry you got two sandwiches and gave away one so was you was you not really hungry god john i said if i did not like him before i can't stand him now because this, see, and this is why they should have never gave us social media. Because <laughs> some folk can handle it. Some folk put stuff out on social media and don't even comprehend how disrespectful, dehumanizing, and ignorant we sound. Because someone who's homeless and say has a sign up saying, you know, we'll do whatever food. Maybe she wants to do some more. Maybe it ain't just her. Maybe she's the one out there with a sign and her kid is somewhere else and the kid will eat the food. I'm like, why would you, child, I said, why would you do that? Why post and make it seem as if you, she's stupid because she didn't eat the food immediately. And you, so you recorded the shit, posted it like, yeah, yeah. They gonna they gonna love this, yeah, yeah. They gonna they're gonna agree. No, 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 no. People need to stop do that. Homeless people or people who are unhoused. I'm gonna go about unhoused people. People who are unhoused do not require or should not be required to drop what they doing if you get them some food. To sit and eat it in front of you. As if if you don't see them eat it, that means they wasn't hungry. My door dad, the little folks have never seen me eat my food. Okay. The folk who live my grocery, they have never seen me eat. No one who I get my food from, except my waitress at the restaurant. Okay. <laughs> Unless I'm at a sit-down restaurant. No one who I've gotten my food from watches me eat it because i'm so hungry i eat it in front of them okay if you was nice enough to give her some food move the fuck on i don't like him he that's my nerves oh bastard no fuck. and also why are we into it okay why are we into folk who hurt our nerves let's just take it on over to brian mcdonald now, i said i could have swore we was leaving people in the last of the year. Brian McChild, my parents got married off of Brian McKnight's song. I think it was back at one. I think this is the one they got married to. And you have ruined the memory of my parents' wedding because I now 
feel like your love songs are bullshit, sir, because of how you treat your children. Now, he's up here commenting back about a, a, a comment from one of his posts. Uh, and the, the comment says, the one that keeps saying, what about his other children? Some families are pure evil and can't blah, 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 blah. Okay? Y'all listen. So lastly this week, I want to big up my man right here. See, he gets it. In order to live a life that you love, you have to get rid of the evil. In order to live the life you love, you have to get rid of evil. And you see, the comment is about his other children, his older children. And the negativity, even if that evil and negativity is related. We want everyone to live a life that you love. Our hashtag, that's what it means. Hashtag, I love our life. I also feel like he's trying to hold his head aside to show the double R's. You know? Um, now, look, I'm a firm believer in you do not have to hold on to toxic family members if they are toxic and they are disruptive of your life. But I also feel like, to me, that don't really go for parents and children when it doesn't seem like there's a big issue. It seemed like Brian McKnight got a new wife got new kids and this did not feel like dealing with his other children but in order to do that you have to get rid of all that evil and negativity there's so many angry and upset and negative people out there we want to use our platform as a place of positivity a positivity platform so hopefully i mean who knows next week maybe i'll only respond to positive comments we'll see see you next week i i just don't this is the full comment the one that's that keeps saying what about his other children some families are pure evil and can influence your own children nothing makes people more angered than a man who found peace with another woman that shows love and affection and peace i am so happy for brian and his family jesus said those who act in love Act are his family, and I believe that blood ain't thicker than love. Now he's loving the 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 comment of saying, "Thank God Brian found another wife and moved on from his children." I was like, Brian, I just it's a catch twenty two because. It's not as if he's saying something horrible. It's, it's not like he's saying my kids did some horrible things to me. They are horrible people and I can't be around them. It seems as if there is this, this just discourse between him and his children. And he tends to praise the new kids and ignore the older kids. He not even really living life like it, it, it don't matter. To me, Brian McKnight be purposefully dissing his older kids to make the new kids feel better. And Brian's ex-wife, who's the mother of his older children, uh, spoke out. You know how I strive to live within a space of positivity. I try daily to make a conscious effort to remain in that space because outside of that isn't a happy place to be um physically mentally spiritually it's better for me to be in a space where i make sure that the joy is what's around me because I have so much to be thankful for, so many things that I'm grateful for. And I know the way the devil works. And I know that in those times where blessings, where blessings are bountiful, he likes to creep in and he likes to use things that he feels will touch parts of you, touch parts of you to bring you out of a space where your energy is brought to a lower vibration. Because, because, bitch, you out here speaking to my kids. Okay? And this is what I, I feel like this. I feel like when strangers are commenting 
on your social media and asking why aren't you this or that with your children, you can really ignore them and just block them or whatever. But when you make a, a point to make a video acknowledging and like it, yeah, big up in this one post about how getting rid of evil and 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 connecting to your children, you're tr that, that's that's the definition of toxic. Because in my we we don't really see his kids put out stuff discussing him. We don't. But when Brian makes the point to come out and publicly make posts on social, because he know he know it'll get traction. So her point is we in a place of peace over here. And this motherfucker around here is, is saying things that's going to pull me out of my good space and pull me out of my gracious space. And pull me out of my wrath above the space. And it's going to take me down to a lower vibration that I don't want to go to. Because the devil trying to cause discourse where there isn't any. Plus my thing. When you don't with people, you don't discuss some people. When you don't with people, when someone bring it up, you just block them and leave it be. Brian be making it a point to mention how he don't fuck with them kids lower level because then you're no longer able to continue on a path where you are okay that day and that time and that moment and in those seconds it will and has has been and will forever be in reference to my children as i'm sure most mamas are as i'm sure most daddies are and at some point it's just enough it's just enough and it has to be clear that and hopefully it can help some other folk who might be dealing with situations where there's a constant gnaw of ridiculousness that's trying to get its way almost like a rat that knows there's food on the other side that will nourish every part of them because they're not getting it and with this situation it's attention because don't know, ain't nobody sitting around here talking about Brian McKnight. Now, there's one comment we see here where someone commented on Brian McKnight's page saying, The same God that said, Honor your father and your mother also said, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are, a, they are a reward from Him and train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is older, he will not depart from it. Your children are a reflection of the work and prayers and, and, and spirituality. And moral confidence that parents pour into into kids. You disown kids that you created, and you are also against God. But Judgment Day is between you and your Maker. Brian McKnight said, "God wasn't talking about children that are the product of sin, which these two are. I didn't raise them; their mothers did." <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. Let me let me, let me let me repeat. Brian McKnight said, "One, God wasn't talking about children that are the product of sin, which these two are. Two, I don't, I didn't, I didn't raise them. Their mother did. Three, know the whole story before quoting the Bible. Four, take your inaccurate negativity off my page and thank you being and try, and try being happy. The fact that Brian was out here fucking wrong." The fact that he created the children with his own penis and then say, well, I didn't raise them. Their mamas raised them. You know, God wasn't talking about kids that were made in sin. I'm like, nigga, what? What? And, the, and, and when there's a comment here that said, so, as a woman, his second wife is not telling him this not cool. And that's Brian McKnight really wants attention because who the fuck says that? And like she's saying, that Negro wants attention and he ain't gonna get it from me. I cut him off at the knees, cut his ass off at the knees. Also, cut him folks off at the knees, Neo. Neo, Neo, Neo. This is my thing with Neo. 
I feel like people, some people are not monogamous. Some people do not like being monogamous. Monogamy is not something for them. I understand that. But Neo for years tried to act like a person who was in a monogamous relationship while cheating on each woman he was with, okay? Having children with, you know, many, I'm sorry, having many, having, having two children with each woman he has been with, with Monietta, with Crystal, with that new lady, whatever. And now Neo was walking around there with two women, because I, I guess he got two women now. And TMZ caught up with him, and they was asking him about, you know, if he, like, polygamy, if he wants to date multiple women, and, you know, about plural marriage or whatever. And Neo, like, I don't see what's wrong with it. You know, why not? Now, <laughs> this is my thing. I feel like you can have multiple wives. This is my thing. If you don't want the government in your life, in your marriage, in, in, your, in your relationship, then don't get married legally. Getting married legally is one thing. If you want to have multiple wives, just have a it's, it's a fake marriage. You know, if you wife number one, two, three, four, five, it's just you're not going down to the courthouse to fill out paperwork. Okay, to say, hey, legally. Where mar marriage is a legal documentation is meaning this is my next of kin. If I die, they get what I got. Okay, that's really all that it is. The the legalness of marriage is just in case somebody dies, in case someone is hurt, in case someone's in the hospital. This is the next of kin. This is the person who legally has the right to make decisions. That's why most people. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna say that. That's the, in my opinion. That is what the legalness of marriage is. If you just love more than one person and you, if you and your three girlfriends are in love and you and the three women are all connected and y'all all want to be together, then just do that. Then just do that. But what you should not do is Get with somebody, say, yeah, I want it to be me and you, but you riot cheating on them. You know what I'm saying? That's what Neil has done in every relationship. Now, currently, you know what I'm saying? He is not, now he's like, I'm, I'm going to be a dick I'm going to be out here dicking everybody down. I'm going to have more, people now know I do not want to have just one person. However, to make it seem as if what well, they it shouldn't be legal. Well, it, you don't child yes, it, it laws. Laws. If you want to have two wives, fine. Get a broom, jump it, and say y'all, y'all married. And let that be that. But men won't do that because and, and, and let's let's be honest, if Neo did if Neo was not a rich um, a uh, uh, writer, singer, whatever, all all the stuff he does. If Neo wasn't Neo, if he was a Schaefer with the weird head, and the, and he was short, he would not have the the idea that he can have all these women. People are with Neo because he has money. Neo is having multiple women be with him because they want the money. Because before he was Neo, was he having multiple girlfriends at the time? No. No. And again, if you want to have multiple people, if you want to date around, if you do not want to have a monogamous relationship, I don't see nothing wrong with that as long as everybody is aware and okay with it. And every time I see him talking about it or whatever, and him making it seem as if, well, I've always wanted to be a, 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 a polygamist. I always wanted more than one. No, you acted like this loving man of one woman, and that is what, not who you were. And now you are this 
dick sharing man who wants who does who wants to enjoy more who wants to enjoy having more than one woman as your woman and if the women agree then do then do you sir then do you but it it is aggravates me that he and i'm like I also I'm, T, tmz be asking the most random the most random questions but i feel like it's because he was walking down the street holding two women hands and i'm like first of all child did Theo call did, did he call tmz Because why would anybody just be walking down the street and here come TMZ? Hey, Neo, what Neo's two girlfriends doing? We said, so, Neo, you want to be a polygamist? Is that what you want, Neo? He says, in the realm of love and, rom and romance, you should let people do whatever the hell they want to do. Can't see how it's hurting anybody. And they said, well, do you think it should be legalized meeting the polygamy? Or, or just meaning multiple marriages. He says, sure, why not? To be honest, I don't need the government to tell me what it is I can or can't do with my personal life. And no one is. However, when you go down to the courthouse, which is a government facility, and you fill out paperwork to marry one person, you can't keep marrying more than one person. You, you can be with more than one person. The government don't care. The government cares when you start marrying legally on paper more than one person. Neil, you're ruining the music, sir. You, you're ruining and, and again, I, I want to reiterate, I don't mind the fact that he does not want to be married. I don't mind the fact that he wants to be a person with plural relationships. But be honest, you've lied for the past, what, 15 years? You cheated on the, you cheated on Monietta. You cheated and had kids on Crystal. And then the, the, the women you with now ain't even the youngest kid's mama. So you imploded your marriage. Because he, 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 re, he remarried Crystal. This is why I'm saying Neil's a piece of shit. He's a liar. Because he knew what he did not want. He knew he wanted to be this child. He's so on his own to whoever. You remarry Crystal while knowing you were having a whole relationship with the Sade girl had already had the one baby with a second baby on the way. That's called a liar, a deceiver, a heartbreaker. Because if you did not want to be in a monogamous marriage, why remarry your wife? Why not say wife? I want an open marriage. I want an open relationship. I cannot live life with just one woman. And then at that point, it's up to Crystal if she would have stayed or left. But the fact, and I'm not, the, the fact that Crystal had to find out that you were not only cheating, but had two kids with another woman while being married. To me, that proves you're a piece of shit. Because you were sneaking around. And now that she divorced you, for your philandering and, and, and baby making during the marriage with other women, with, with, with another woman, okay, two kids with one woman, I meaning y'all was having a whole relationship or whatever. And now you want to be, oh, I just want to be free. I just want to be free. Well, be free, bitch. Okay, be free. You know, he, just, he gets on my nerves. There's so much so. Uh, they say that Black China has dropped her lawsuit against Tyga over child support. Both will share joint legal custody. I'm sorry, joint and physical custody of King. Now, a lot of folk were upset. I felt like a lot of people felt like China did not have the kid a lot. I feel like they had joint custody before, and I also feel like. 
when you share custody with, with, with basically two men, because you know, she also has a dream with, with Rob. Um, and King is 11 years old now, and she was wanting more child support, but she dropped it. That's fine. Um, but I feel like folk did not realize her issue from before was that Tyga was getting some some of her days. Tiger still had the son, and she just wanted back all her regular days, okay? So now, you know, she don't want extra child support. You know, they both have joint custody of the kid, everything good, okay? We're going to leave them be. Kudos. When when the parents, child, when the parents get along, we love it. Um, I saw a Bravo, child, when I seen this, this trending, that... Um, Andy may be leaving Bravo, and oh, they're trying to get a, a, a departure package, and oh, because of the, the accusations from that one white lady from the Housewives of, I think maybe OC or I don't know the lady, the between lady, or whatever. I saw that, and I was like, I don't believe that to be true. I feel like if if they didn't fire Andy when Nene accused him of being a racist drug cocaine sniffing person, I feel like they're not going to fire him based on the picture. Child, it wasn't true, basically. Okay. Um, I feel like Andy's power at Bravo has changed over the years, probably because he's tired of being so involved with some of the housewife shows. And when Bravo had to come out and say he's not being terminated, you know, it was some bullshit. It was basically a fake story. So I but I didn't believe it. Um to me, they will always keep Andy over there in some capacity. Now, do I feel like hopefully they'll get somebody else to host reunions? I hope that happens. But I don't mind him being on the Watch What Happens Live thing or whatever. And let him have his EP credit, you know, in, in this. But I'm like, child, I don't get no fuck because of child. It is what it is. You hear me? It is what it is. But they say Andy ain't going nowhere. Now, I want to jump to uh, the Carlos King of it all, okay? But y'all want y'all to first take one last second, y'all, and like the video. Y'all like the video. Um, I want to touch on this NBA young boy stuff because I feel like when I talked about it two days ago, that he was arrested because he is on house arrest over there in Utah. And they talk about that man is and it's a whole prescription drug fraud ring. Rico child, anytime they say something is a ring. Rico, the first thing that popped in my head, Rico. Okay, um, but let's see what the news said. For a popular rapper is facing over six. I think it's, it's low, but you know, just try to listen up. Sixty charges after he was arrested in Cash County. Kentrell Deshaun Golden, otherwise known as NBA YoungBoy, was booked into the Cash County Jail just yesterday before three o'clock in the afternoon. And according to police documents, NBA YoungBoy is a suspect in a large-scale prescription fraud ring. This ring is known to try to acquire promethazine with codeine 
Police also say that they suspect the call multiple pharmacies pretending to be someone else. How are you at house at the house on house arrest and round here being in a RICO case? Child, it says he faces 63 charges, a slew of felony charges, suspect in prescription of fraud ring. Um, he now he denied involvement. But he's in jail with no bond. Try to get this drug. NBA young boy was arrested Tuesday and denied involvement in the ring. However, law enforcement searched his home and found prescriptions matching those fake patients. Why would you keep child? Did y'all hear that? It said in the house. Okay, when the police came in, police came and knocked on the door, okay, and searched the house. Prescriptions were found in his house that matched the fake prescription. I was like, "Bit, why would you? Why would you keep what? I keep telling y'all, don't shit where you eat." And prior fraudulent pharmacy investigations, he's in jail without bail. New at four. I feel like, of course, he's in jail with no bail, okay? Because it sounds like he did that shit. Now, I also saw this post, okay? It says, pharmacy shared experience of being targeted in prescription fraud scheme involving NBA young boy and the 60 charge. New information tonight after Singer and... Child, a, child, a whole new mug shot. You know how crazy it is? to be on house arrest and get a new mug shot for new charges would you not supposed to go no damn well rapper nba young boy faces dozens of charges as we have reported mark that he was taken into custody in cash county accused of organizing fraudulent drug prescriptions at utah pharmacies legally known as kentrell Golden. he's been on house arrest in utah since 2021 Nick had been on house arrest for three years and got new charges. Ariel Harrison live tonight after speaking with one of those targeted businesses, Ariel. Yeah, well, one part of so why is Ariel on the cliff somewhere? Why is she on the cliff? Yo, now the backdrop is beautiful, but why is she on the cliff? Why is she not at the pharmacy? This I spoke with said they thankfully didn't fulfill that order as they noticed some red flags, but unfortunately others weren't so lucky. Now tonight, the young celebrity who already had a criminal history now faces more than 60 related charges to this alleged scheme. Pharmacy owner Eric Stewart says hearing news of an arrest. And you know he gonna snitch. <laughs> Eric look like y'all try to scheme and scam my pharmacy. I'm gonna tell everything okay i'm about the news the police the priests jesus everybody and the fraud ring investigation involving his business was a relief and i'm just happy that they're able to connect the dots last september stewart says his team at reed's pharmacy in hiram new information tonight oh, wait. after from someone claiming to be a doctor needing to fill a prescription something he called the first red flag usually don't get a doctor calling in a cough syrup themselves that'll be like a nurse or something but then just their medical terminology was off the the quantities, the way they, you know, pronounce the things. Um, See, that be the get you gotcha. That be the get you. Look, because I work, y'all know, I, I keep my life private, okay? But when you, doctors do not call in prescriptions, <laughs> they don't at all. They barely write them up, okay? Um, Y'all know most of the time the nurses do it all, okay? It is random that a doctor calls in a prescription, but even if the doctor does, he knows exactly quantities. He knows how to pronounce the shit the right way. It's just stuff. It's medical terminology, okay? So in, in, in child. And that's how you be knowing people are stupid. But I think also... Sometimes pharmacies be so busy, they don't be paying attention. But this man, like, no, uh, mm -mm. you a doctor? Nope, don't sound right. You not pronouncing the shit right? Don't sound right. 
doc, 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 shit all. I'm like, how you say that word? I can't say that word. Everything was suspicious. Like Stewart's case, arrest documents reveal multiple other pharmacies across Utah were targeted too. According to investigators, callers linked to Young Boy would call in prescriptions using the name of a real doctor and provo in some cases, but giving fake patient information. Individuals would then pick up the order from pharmacies, mainly promethazine and codeine. And what that means is somebody at a doctor's office is involved. Because they had to get an MP, because the MPI number is for a particular doctor. You know what I'm saying? MPI numbers, tax ID numbers, all of that stuff, you have to get it from somewhere. So more than likely, somebody at a doctor's office was also in on it to at least get them that information that they kept using. These type of medications they're trying to get are regulated. And so throwing a, a, a chink in the, in the, I guess process can really disrupt uh, potential opportunities to get the medication you actually need. Weber County Sheriff's teams helped take Galden into custody with. He looked like he did it. That's so sad. Federal partners just yesterday. We believe this to be several more months of work. From someone claiming to be a job business owners like Stewart appreciate. But when it's on a bigger scale like this, it's more concerning, right? Uh, because they're pretty persistent and um, I mean, it's just a big disruption to us and it's what, just a headache for us to have to deal with. And the, this is the bad part that New folk don't pay attention to. Information tonight. When it's, it's the equivalent of when well, you go to CVS, right? And you used to go to CVS and get your little deodorant from out there, get you some condoms, okay, some pregnancy tests, okay, some plan B pills or whatever. But because folk be working here stealing stuff, and so the quantities are less and less and less, and they have to they have to try to protect the you know who is illegally getting things. They lock it on up. Now I see this. You got to you got to get the key to get some condoms. Okay. The same thing with medication. If you need Vicodin, if you need a, a if you need, you know, whatever other pill of value, they would then make it harder for people to get their pills because there's so much scheme of scamming going on. So if he is out here getting fake prescriptions, getting all the medication, when somebody actually has a prescription for said medication, they would have a hard time getting it because they're like, okay, is it fake? Because they be scheming, scamming. And now when you have an actual prescription from your doctor, you need it. You know what I'm saying? You have to jump through hoops because, because people be wanting scheming, scamming. So child, NBA, young boy, you going to prison. Okay? You going to prison. And the fact that they said they found the, the, the prescription things in bottles of the fraudulent prescriptions in his house, and he the only one there. Stupid, dumb. And you are you you been a house arrest with? Why I don't I don't get why? So why would you you at a house a mansion in Utah? Okay, so if you don't get your podcast, okay, get your little mic. Okay, uh, do do some uh, some do stuff from home, but you want to be around here scheming, scamming the 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 um the 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 the, the lean stuff. I I, really, I think everybody going to get implicated because he didn't do it on his own because he's on house arrest, even if. Even if all he did was get the stolen shit, he still caught up in the bullshit. Because as a person on house arrest, you're not supposed to be involved in any of the negativity, anything illegal. Okay, if you are doing illegal I illegal things, okay, you going to jail. But some folks think they, and, and, I, and I always say, look, the crimes that used to be committed 20 years ago, 
because you know they didn't have all this technology stuff or whatever. You can't do that shit now. Nah. 20 years ago, you probably could do a whole uh, pharmacy thing where you can call a pharmacy, whatever, and say, hey, I need them. And it wasn't, because it's, it's, it's a lot of checks and balances now. You know? So it's like, stop scheming, scamming. Just stop. Because for what? You already rich. At least we think you was rich. Okay? Like, once you, child, child look. It, it aggravates me because regular working for a child, if, if, even if he has five mil in a account, bitch, give me forty thousand dollars three times, well maybe four times. Okay, give me a hundred and sixty grand, I can make that shit work. Okay, it's weird to me when these celebrities get these all this money. They have these large sums of money and they're still doing dumb shit. It's crazy because if a regular working person had uh, this this twenty five percent of somebody else's fortune, they would. I, I'm the child. If I get rich, I'm not gonna be scheming. Scam. I don't. Well, I don't scheme scam now. But I'm saying like it's stupid to me that you have access to these things. You have money. You have you have fame in some way or whatever. Even if you're on house arrest, people still like you. Can't make music at home. Put it on YouTube, child. Put it on Napster. Put it out. You are on house arrest. You're dumb for even even allowing anyone to bring in stolen uh, medication. Because can't nobody tell me he ain't no stolen. It's my fucking crack. It's my fucking crack. Um, let's get to because when let me see, like, there's a 50 cent. Let me see what left. Um, we did need. Oh, let me do, let me do, um, let me do Carlos. Let me do Carlos. Hold on, where Carlos at, y'all? Um, so Winter interviewed with Queen Sheba. It was a good interview. I, I watched the whole thing. I think I, think I did. Um, Winter revealed in her interview with Queen Sheba that the money they were getting paid. Now, she she did not give a specific amount of money, but she made it clear that no one was making more than $3,000. And she said that was what uh, Monique was probably making, was making her first season. She said, Monique told me what to ask for based on what she was making, and she was making the most. And she wasn't making more than three thousand, and I and the other cast was not making more than twenty five hundred. Again, that's per episode. I think season one had maybe ten episodes. If I'm not mistaken, maybe I think it was, I think it's ten episodes. Um, so let's see, twenty five hundred child times ten was that? So it's about twenty five grand. So twenty five grand for the season. Now let me say this. Love and Marriage DC was a brand new show. Um, also, OWN is not a huge network. OWN to me is still building themselves to be, you know, something. Now, OWN now is better than OWN was when it first came out. But OWN is still learning, not learning, but OWN is still building itself up to be. You know, a Bravo. It's not. It's not a Bravo because like Bravo wasn't Bravo back then either. Um, twenty five hundred dollars per episode for a new show of basically unknown people. We knew Monique and Chris from Potomac, so I get why she made three thousand dollars or whatever, uh, allegedly. Uh, but folks feel like. Carlos is out here, you know, paying real, real low. He's been exposed for being a low-paying producer. I don't feel like it was low. Uh, I don't think he's been exposed for being low, a low-paying producer. I do think he's been exposed for using the cast. Um, because Love the Marriage Huntsville cast for sure is getting more than $2,500 an episode. I feel like Beloved Marriage Huntsville has been out for like child for years at this point. I think when they first came out, they probably was not making a lot of money. 
So winter this it, it letting us know, hey, we making like love and hip hop season one, two money. To me, it makes sense because love and Mary DC was brand new. Now, my thing is that mean love and Mary DC three four, they're probably a thousand dollars, not much at all. Um, winter also was saying how you know this environment was different or whatever. I think Carlos is a villain. Carlos tries to make it seem as if he isn't because when Carlos talks in his interviews or whatever, he laughs so loud to disarm people and to make people feel like he's innocent. Oh, look, he's, he's funny. No, Carlos laughs loud at nothing to distract y'all from realizing he's on bullshit. Carlos loves bringing up the drama and everything else on every other show. Shy and White Hammond Heavenly was doing a little recap or whatever, and he tried to crack a little joke saying, oh, something or whatever, and she's like, oh, no, let's discuss you, Pentafolk, 25K. A messy Monday with the one, the only, Dr. Heavenly, who was in Africa, because, you know, she told me before that when women go to Africa, they sometimes go with Quad or Yandy. Or <laughs> see, Carlos again. Carlos be trying to be shady, <laughs> and y'all know Hamley is shady too. Oh, we want to be messy. Let's talk about how you pay them people twenty five hundred dollars. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know what people think we get paid. We do not get Bravo money. What I can say because I am contract. This is the winter talking to Queen She, but another shout out to Bro Chat where I found this from. Okay. Shut up. Actually, Bao, not to give numbers, what I can say is that it was not over 2,500 an episode. And I feel like that means they were getting 2,400 an episode. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They're probably getting, you know, between 2,000 to 2,400 per episode the first season. But truthfully, they've only been, you know, it's been two seasons. Um, and the second season, which was a 10 month, 11 month break between the two, child, but that's crazy within itself. Was this specific to you? From what I understand and what Monique had expressed to me, she was the highest paid on our cast. And she told me that I should ask for what she was getting mm -hmm. so she actually volunteered what she was getting to me so i knew what she made and now the question is did carlos use monique and told monique to give uh winter a fake amount of money okay because was monique lying and she knew for a fact that no one on our cast made higher than her which was I can't remember her exact number but it it, it wasn't it, above that 2500 no it wasn't above 3000 for sure so I'm like, did, was Monique making twenty nine hundred? So Carlos King is wow. Right? We're not gonna get into that because I okay. Okay. child. So we're we're good. Child, he's he's befuddled. He's he's confused. He can, he he don't know what to say. They were good. They were good there. We're good there. Hang in the back. Every time Carlos gets kind of called out. I feel like he doesn't really he doesn't really respond to stuff or whatever. Um, because he know have me can be messy too. And don't don't try to be messy with me and think I won't be messy back. Because everybody saw Winter saying you paying them for the bare minimum. But again, own is not this huge network that you know could be paying them a whole lot of money. The cast is at least six people for the main cast. Um, on Love and Marriage, uh, DC, and so twenty. That's probably the budget. That's probably the budget. Um, I'm not saying that's good, bad, or indifferent, but I do feel like if it's a brand new show, they do not know how it's going to take off. And let's not be, uh, let's not, let's not lie. Love and Marriage, DC wasn't that good, and then Monique left. So season two, we had you know still kind of new people. And, and and a whole new person or whatever. So I don't feel like they. I, I don't. I, I think if if DC 
gets to a season four, if they do. I feel like maybe they'll get let's let's pay them, you know, ten thousand dollars an episode. You know what I'm saying? Can the budget be opened up? Yeah, she also brought up how they have, you know, seasons one A, one B, and two and all that stuff. And she uh, uh Winter said how she feel like the reason for that is so that um if you're still within the same season, you can't renegotiate you can't renegotiate your, your, your contract. So if for season one I signed on for 2500 you know what I'm saying, and even if we we shot 10 episodes and we should be going on to season two, no, let's call it one B. And then you have you know 10 more episodes. You can't renegotiate because we it's still the same season. And I feel like with you know Huntsville, we kept on saying, like, why is all these damn episodes? And what's this point one and point, you know, one and two? Like just do one fucking season. And it makes sense because at that point in time, people can't they can't negotiate, they cannot negotiate again. Um, but, you know, Huntsville coming back, I think like two weeks on on. Um, I feel like Detroit now they said before that Detroit got a second season. I don't know why I don't live here. At all. Um, I feel like we don't need, because the DC franchise, it was too far in between. They all beefing. We have enough of what the, what the damn husband folks. Leave the other shows alone and leave it be, okay? But Carlos, to me, is more of a villain and how he is the the mastermind of bullshit, how he's messy, and how he'll have these interviews. He just laughs so much that y'all don't realize he's really the villain. He's really the villain, and I don't I don't like Carlos. I don't. He aggravates me. Um, it's a, it's a good thing. He it's it's it's, it's a catch twenty two. I mean, kudos to him for having his own company, uh, with in production. Him trying to you know. Have show, but I'm like, child, he want to be a puppet master, and it aggravated me that sometimes he's like he's always in other folks' mess. But then, like the fact he's never addressed the shit with Candy, but will address other folks' shit. It just aggravates my spirit. Um, Fifty Cent opened up a studio in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, it is, I think it's called like uh, G Unit Films or whatever, G, G, G Unit something. He opened up a 956,000 square feet studio. Um, it's, a, it's the second biggest black like, owned pressure studio in the world. You know, look, y'all know I, I don't like that man. I'm excited to, to show you the expansion of G Unit Film and Television through G Unit Studios right here in Shreveport. I got music right here. From the gritty narratives of the street to the compelling stories that define our era, g has always been more than entertainment. It's, it's been a, a place for voices to be heard, for stories to be told. Y'all know I don't like him. <laughs> I can't stand what he said. It aggravates me that he's so talented with creating shows. Um... So I'll be picking and choosing, you know what I'm saying, what I watch or whatever. But because I know he isn't the sole creator of stuff, he has a team of people he works with. And so for me, I feel like I ignore him being a product of it and like to support the other black folk. I feel like, you know, because he's a, he is a black man. And he hasn't been as trolly lately like he has before. Um, so I might am I a hypocrite? I mean a little bit because he is on my nerves. He does. But to me, he has not done anything illegal. He just talked too much shit sometimes. And that's my that's my true issue with him is sometimes he just talked too much shit and he and he aggravates me. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see what happens, but but congratulations to 50 Cent and whatever. Anyway, um, I don't want to go on that. Child, do I want to do? Because I feel like I'm missing something. I did call up there, Brian. I did 50. Um, I did Neo. We're gonna get to let's do one. Let's, let's do Wendy, her husband, her ex-husband. Um, 
Wendy's ex-husband, Kevin. Child, Kevin brought here being a whole asshole. Um, I want to add about this. Kevin who we know wants more money. Kevin, who we know was trying to say, I need more alimony. I don't care when it isn't working. I need my money. Um, we just came out that they allegedly, allegedly paid him an additional, by accident, $112,000 they went back. Kevin came on social media and he went live up in Renton and Raven. And y'all, Kevin, this is my thing. Had Kevin not been consistently cheating on Wendy with Sharina and had a baby with that lady and then was fine saying, fuck my family and living with Sharina because he was getting paid by Wendy. But now that Wendy can't work it, now he wants to be child. Sir, you are a lost call that we don't get to support. Okay. Point blank, period. For all the people that 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 just don't look. First of all, no, I cannot go save Wendy. Wendy can, only Wendy can save Wendy. Okay, I told you all three years ago that this is a disease. Okay, alcoholism is a disease. There's other diseases involved. Without getting into personal, like this is something you know. When it comes down to it, you know, people got to do what they got to do. As for the person Tina doll who has nothing better to do and on my page to get a job, sweetheart. I'm I feel like you round here complaining about people complaining about you because you round here trying to get more money from Wendy. That's the issue. The issue is we don't care about nothing you got going on. You keep trying to get money from her knowing she's not physically, mentally well. You are. You have not been working because if so, why are you so broke? Why haven't you downsized? And all we see you doing is asking Wendy's attorneys and, and Wendy's estate folk for more money. I'm about to announce so many jobs that I have that I guarantee you when I announce these announcements next month, I just got to take care of this course. So all of you miserable healers and, and, and women on my... Not miserable whores. Not miserable whores. You in court trying to get money from Wendy. Page is going to be very mad. But for the smart people, for the smart people who understand the plight of, I'm not trying to play victim. Yes, you are. Again, I take full accountability. A lot of y'all still don't know what's going on, and you still won't know what's going on. And as per the documentary that you just saw, which was whatever, I knew nothing about it, you still don't know what's going on. Sir, we know that Wendy needs help. We know that you did not help her. And we know you want her money. And guess what? There was nothing good that came out of that. No. We all found out that she was being basically mishandled by producers, by management, by her PR. So something good did come from it. You did not get any money. Her funds were not released to you or her or her son. However, more people are not aware of what's going on. Nothing good came out of the documentary. So I don't know what was the display for. All of the people that were involved, the celebrities, half of them were involved in enabling her. So Black China, you need to go sit down before I air you out and let, you know, let people know what you really did. Sir, nothing, I feel like it's weird to me to come at Black China. You know, Black China went to, and visited Wendy one time or whatever. But I feel like was Black China in Winnie's life enough to enable her? Or was the man she was married to for 20 or 30 years who knew of her issues and allowed her to be shrunken down to always depending on you? And so once you left, you it, she was left with nothing. You were also an enabler. Also, a disabled because you disabled her. But again, I'm leaving. There's a lot of there's a lot, but I'm not here for that. And Black China could have done anything to Wendy that really made what the issue is with her that uh, you can't blame Black China. You can't at all. We blame you. 
and you trying to put the blame on someone else and then say in Black China. I was like, because all she said was in her little interview that I had that she went to go visit Wendy. It wasn't planned. And she and, and Wendy was happy to see her. Sir, don't be upset that you could not get access to Wendy during the documentary. Listen, you miserable women, please. You miserable. Please stay off my page. Just get stay off my page. Pray for the people that's involved. Pray for my ex-wife. Pray for Wendy Williams. Hunter. Pray for Wendy Williams. Pray that for the family. Pray for everybody that's involved. And whatever I'm out here doing and whatever people think I'm doing, guess what? If I don't go out here and do it, who the fuck is going to What are we going to do? We going to We? Who is we? Just let everybody, whatever the display is, whoever's in charge, they clearly don't care. So, and, I, and I've been minding my business. I've been doing what I got to do to make these announcements that I'm about to make to show that I am working hard and going to keep working. My legacy is not over. Sir, why ain't you been doing it? Why did it already happen? Why? All of a sudden now you working on things? Okay. Whatever I have to do for the legacy that still includes my entire family is still not over. My son is looking. My daughter's looking. My lady is looking. Oh, you with Sharina still? Everybody's looking now. Not really. Nobody looks at Kevin until Kevin goes to court and get money from Wendy. Like, no one is like, what is Kevin doing? No one. We only speak of him when he goes to court to try to get more money from Wendy's estate. So at this point, you know, if you don't really care, if you're still caught up on that nigga, nigga, nigga armatry or that nigga news about whatever, you don't really see what's going on here, the real plight, then okay. But please, I'm going to ask you. To please refrain, you women, refrain from my comments. Refrain, go get a life, go get a man, go get some penis, go do whatever you need to do. But please stop. Penis. Don't worry about Kelvin. Because whatever Kelvin come out this doing, however, God got me, however this is going to go, God got me, God got her, God got everybody involved. And God got me here in Newark today. Because the Lord knows I didn't want to be here. But yes, you did. I did not want to be here. I love Florida. And I love where I'm going with my life. And if anybody was really watching, they see that I really am not even subscribed to. That's why I tuned off for this. But today I felt the need because God has given me the power and all of the wisdom to go in there. And you know what? God, like, how I get it is? Now see how to keep putting me in stuff? But I want to tell the people that care, I represented myself pro se. A guy with a 10th grade education in the GED. I had to go in there pro se. It's pro se. Okay. <laughs> and represent myself in a court of law. And I did pretty well. So, with that being said, I want to tell, for anybody that cares, I thank you, I, your blessings for all the prayers that are coming from people regarding the whole situation that is not easy to deal with. Thank you. And for all of the haters and the people who don't know no better, half of y'all should not have 16K, y'all should not have any characters or keyboards because y'all don't even... You know, you can't even type. When, anyway, to all of you guys, please go and get a life. Sir, you and Wendy have been divorced for like, what, four years now? Because it happened before the pandemic. The fact that you even still have any dealings trying to get something from the estate shows you ain't been trying to do shit besides live off the money that she made. You're still trying to get money off of what she did. The fact that you was with her for so long as her manager, and once y'all separated or whatever, you didn't have anything else set up. You didn't have not man legacy for yourself, even though you was running fucking Janina and having that baby. You had nothing planned, sir. Sit down. I know that whatever Cab does, Cab gonna be good. Cab gonna be great, as a matter of fact. Stop speaking in third person. Kev is walking with God, and Kev is following God's spirit. So, that's it. You know what I'm saying? And you stay tuned in, because when it's all said and done, all you haters, I'm still going to have love for y'all. When all the smoke clears, I'm still going to have love for y'all. All right? All right. Child, Kevin need Jesus. Kevin need Jesus. Kevin need Jesus. Kevin need Jesus.
Kevin to fix it. I don't understand why he feels like people who don't like what he did is haters. No, you was on some bullshit. Some complete bullshit. And no one likes it. No one appreciates it, okay? Uh, yeah, I want to move on to Peter and them. And then we can kind of end this thing around here. So, y'all, Peter. Oh, where is it at? Peter, this was not in my bingo card. Because I, I don't understand how it happened. Peter and Sikiyana, I'm like, why y'all beefing? What is going on? That's not, that's not normal. So, apparently, Sikiyana was doing a video. And she was twerking on some man with one leg. Okay. Peter commented saying, like I said, let's just bring in the one leg man to show out disgusting we are. I mean, how? Show how disgusting we are. We all going to hell for shit like this. I wonder what the little girl think looking at this video going to think. Now, I feel like, first of all, little girl should not be watching Sukiyana ever. Um, in fact, Sukiyana is, is, no, she's not kid friendly. So Peter posted that on social media, okay? And I don't know why Peter mad about a man with one leg getting humped on. I'm not sure why that's such an, 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 you know, an atrocity or whatever. However, Sukiyana found, saw the post because it went viral, okay? And she just, child, she said something back. I want to know who the Peter man is and why he got my name in his blood clot mouth. Don't talk or go ahead and send this message to him. Peter Guns, Peter Brad. I said, Peter, I said, Peter, child, Peter Guns. Wrong, Peter. Wrong, Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Okay, wrong man. Okay. Peter, the animal people, I don't know who he is. So, as you guys know, I was just shooting a music video, right? And um, I was dancing with a guy out there, and the guy happened happened to have um, he had he he had one leg or whatever. So I was dancing with him in my music video. First of all, I'm in Jamaica, baby, in Kingston, Jamaica. I don't know if y'all know about Jamaica or any Caribbean islands, but winding and dancing is a big thing there. So then. Is she Jamaican? And why he posted me dancing on this man and said, that's why all y'all going to hell. First of all, you bought me. You need to worry about that restaurant that went to hell. That's what you need to do. Now, now I've been trying to spare you, but I don't understand what me dancing on a man who only got one leg got to do with going to hell. Oh, you saying that he can't dance? He can't get no coochie? Can't dance on him? Is she giving her free coochie? Okay. Now, Peter then responded. Okay, uh, everybody keep on hitting me on my phone. The, the thing said, maybe this will help with upgrading your following from 51,000. Nowadays, we need more than that to sell records. Also, one leg man. I bought my restaurant closing on South Beach. It's okay with me. I had seven since 88. On Miami Beach, and if you eat in better restaurants, you would know what broccolini, broccolini is. This is from a road Jamaican. I was going to, to tag you in this, but I'm quite sure what I say is going to find you just like the last one did. I'm telling you about somebody in Casilla K posting me something about a video that I a video that I repost because I didn't like I didn't like what I saw. I saw a girl shooting a music video and she had a bus parked in front of her with some people on it. And I could just hear the director in the back saying, back up on the one-legged man. Jump in right now, one-legged man. <laughs> Would y'all want to back that ass up on a one-legged man? Or no? She was funny to me. And I thought it was crazy that... um you know, I don't know if the person was a dancer or she's a rapper because I don't, I don't know who that is. Look, I fully believe that Peter has no 
idea who Sukiyana is on a regular. I feel like he maybe has seen her around, but I don't think he know like who she is. But for the fact that they thought it was cool to put the one-legged man in there, and knowing that little girl is gonna see the video, I was a little bit perturbed by it. Okay. Peter, little girls ain't watching Sukiyana, but baby, child, maybe you don't know that. But I guess you know, like, um. A hit dog holler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? First of all, I'm Jamaican. Born in Jamaican. One second, sweetheart. Born in Jamaica. Okay. Is Peter babysitting? Is Peter grandpa day? He may be on grandpa daycare today. Okay. Because you got you got grandkids. In Kingston. All right, real Jamaican. All right. And I knew that was probably in Jamaica when I made the comment. The comment wasn't about the one legged man. The comment was about the fact that they need to put a one-legged man in a music video for it to go viral. I thought that was whack. Mm. Y'all, does Peter have a point? Does Peter have a point? Because had Sukiyana not been dancing on a one-legged man, would any blogs would have posted her in general at the video suit or at the video at video shoot? Now, hearing this part of it, I thought, like, oh, okay, I kind of get what he mean. You know, the same way we say, oh, the people at the, the news station finding the one lady around in a wheelchair, you know, I want, I want her money on, okay, and all this and that. You know, if the question is, okay, are they trying to show something so? I won't say risque, but trying to make something go viral um, by showing her twerking on a one-legged person, knowing that would go viral. Like, I feel like I don't like that. Is, is he saying, like, okay, they tried to exploit the one-legged, maybe the one-legged man, you know, like a little twerk. But I, I feel like I, I, I get what he, I get, people have opinions. You know what I'm saying? I have opinions, okay? So I do feel like sometimes when celebrities or, or or infamous people have commentary about something, maybe we do sometimes take it too literal. I mean, I guess him saying, you know, it could have been used to exploit the one leg person, whatever, and he didn't like that. And that was just his opinion, you know, because we all know a lot of folks say this and say that and all the time or whatever. So maybe that was him just wasn't an opinion. Okay. All right. And as far as you've been to my restaurant and you don't know if broccoli is a real vegetable? Because they probably don't sell that where you at, where you live at. I don't know you. Okay. But broccoli is a vegetable. In case you didn't know it, it's broccoli, broccoli. That part. Uh, so I'm sorry. Maybe you could use this response to go viral. Okay. But the ugliness wasn't towards you. The ugliness was towards the director or the concept developer for that music video. You don't need a one-legged man in your video to go viral as you do some skin out. As you do some skin out, you touch. You don't need that. All right? And Jamaicans got you looking fucked up, and I'm Jamaican, and I was just calling them out. That's all I was doing. See ya. Well, Peter, now Peter said he was out here to try to help. You know, um, maybe he was just saying, hey, they, the producers, the people, the people around there in Jamaica got you looking crazy, humping the one leg man. OK, you ain't need that child. Either way, go. I'm pretty sure tomorrow that took you going to call Peter a ball head of Santa Claus or something. I don't know. Which I'm going to go on. Lastly, so y'all. In the. So we know Diddy, you know, Diddy Bob around here, Diddy is getting a, a plethora of, of things about him and whatever. So that's Shine, y'all. Now, y'all know Shine went to prison for years behind the shooting. And he said nine years in prison. Has always maintained his innocence. Okay. Um, the, the lady down below always said it was diddy no one was really listening okay um 
Shine was talking and Shine was like, we all knew I was the fall guy. Those accusations, he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting. And that is what stands out to me the most because, you know, I've done my best to put it behind me and to move forward. Uh, and so, um, but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Everyone we did. Everyone knew that I was a young kid that took the falls until I got. I never really pointed the finger at. Yes, but what? So what I'm yeah. saying is that was a decision that I made as a young man. I'm not going. Because back then, because your know, shine is, um, I believe he's he's from Belize, so that's why he has an accent. Um, he's from there. He he's always he's always had an accent. He's he's always had an accent. Um. He's not American. But Shine was like, you know, back then, you know, I, I think back then Shine was a little rough around the edges. I think, you know what I'm saying, it was the, the, the no snitching. I think it was pressure. I, I think it could have been, you know, hey, if you do this, I'll take care of your families or whatever. Um, even folks who were saying, how did the girl get shot? You know, a fight broke out. And the shooting happened. And that's when, you know, that's that's when Puffy, Shine, and J-Lo got arrested from this situation. And Shine ended up being the one who got went, sent to prison. We always said they felt like Shine took the rap for Diddy because he was young. He was, you know, part bad boy or whatever. And, you know, he did nine years. And now that it's all this time later, I feel like he's like, you know, y'all knew I was the fall guy. Like, that ain't nothing new. You know, old girl standing with Diddy, that ain't nothing new. At all. Going back on that, I'm not about to point the finger, no. I'm not going to get into that. Um, but the victim is telling you who did what. And another, I, I understand that there are other witnesses. Is she, is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that, in those accusations. Because they are asking him about all the accusations, the lawsuit that Diddy's fighting now. And then how that kind of ties into the club shooting that happened back in 99. And I think everybody, because he went to prison, was gone nine years, and when he get when he got out, he went back over to Belize. You know, um, I believe he was a, like prime prime minister over there or something. And you know, there's no snitching. He didn't, he didn't want to snitch. You know, um, I, what I will say back then, we didn't hear him talk a lot back then. Um, even how he talked a little bit, it had a, a little accent to it, but also he's, he's been out of prison since 2010, I think 2009 or whatever. And he's been back in his home country since then. So he probably just fully talked with his regular accent now because he's back in his own country. Um, but he, he did have an accent back then, but you know, back then, back then we didn't hear, I don't think we ever really heard Shine talk. We just heard Shine rap. So I don't think many people even knew back then that he wasn't from here. He was from Belize. Um, you sound like Biggie. You sound like Biggie. But again, being back in your in your in your you know native country, you know, your accent just comes, you know, is is there. Because you, you know, you're around you're all around your people. Um, but even him, you know, just admitting that I I took the fall. I was a young guy. I'm not point no fingers but she telling y'all what happened i have been saying i didn't do it i didn't do it he just never said did he did it it's 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 almost like the the megan corey kelsey thing where he was he he wasn't trying to deny and he went to prison because back then it was like they were a team you know Child, Diddy is consistent. Child, I don't think, 
how I think the statue, I don't think that he could go to jail now for the shooting, even if the witness and the person said, well, of course I was the fucking father. You know, I was fucking father. Messy. Every month, Diddy in some new shit. Okay, now he the shooter. Anyway, that's it. That's all. That's all I have for today. I, I did not think we'd get two hours, but we got two hours in today. So, y'all, I hope y'all have liked the video, shared the video. I hope y'all have subscribed to my channel. Um, I will have my love at the mock up review up tomorrow, sometime tomorrow, as a premiere. So, please be sure to check out my premiere videos as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier earlier in the video, I am starting next week going to have lives um in the daytime from 11 a.m to 12 p.m so if you up come on look I'm, I'm trying to add lives at 11 in the morning i can be before work and then maybe have one in the evening so that way it won't be so loud so, so loud so long so you know next monday 11 a.m. We're gonna have a good little chit chat about this stuff. It may be TV shows or whatever. A good key key for our word and whatnot. Okay. I love all of y'all, honey. We had a good old time today. I'm gonna go chill out or whatever and enjoy my weekend. And I will see y'all when I see y'all. But y'all know follow me on social media at Getty's Corner on IG, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Be, be y'all have fun, be safe. Okay, love on who you love, child. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye.